this Can You Build It is all about precision. This Can You Build It, we are going to make a very simple ball maze, but we are going to make it exactly to specifications. I want this ball maze to be 50 millimeters on a side, 10 millimeters tall, uh, with a depth of five millimeters so that my three millimeter ball does not get lost and that the exit hole is five millimeters so there's plenty of room for it to get through. Let's get started. Over here, uh, I have a new template and I'm gonna drag a shape out. As we've been dragging shapes out, we've been noticing these bounding boxes. These bounding boxes have been, allowed us to resize by clicking them. I'm clicking the white box to resize this corner and clicking the black box to resize only one side. What you might not have noticed or have no realized the purpose of is these numbers that show up when you click those boxes. These numbers are so you can type in exactly the number you want. In this case, 50 by 50. This box will now be 50 millimeters on each side. To adjust its height, I simply click the height uh, adjuster and I can set that to 10. All right, it's looking pretty good. Now I want to carve out that five millimeter depth. I can do that by dragging another box out. And I want the walls to each be five millimeters thick. This whole thing is 50 millimeters. That means this inside box needs to be 40 millimeters on a side. I can type that in, clicking my boxes to bring that up. All right, my box has moved over, but that's okay. I can select and I can use my align tool. Now, the align tools are super useful. Check this out. I click this box, and I click the other one in the middle, and it's now aligned to the middle. But our job is not done yet, because this box, if I were to cut it, would cut all the way through. We don't want that. I want the floor to be five millimeters tall. You can click on this, and I can drag it up for five. You can also click and enter exactly what you want in that white box, just like all the others. If I drag it up the wrong amount, I can go back, I can hit zero, and there it is. Let's change this into a hole, and then do a group. There we go. Now that our, we have grouped, we can see that we have uh, our square. You can click again, 50, or hover over and see 50 by 50. We can see that this inside is 10. It's looking really great. Uh, to adjust a sphere is the same thing. I'm going to click the white corner. I'm going to resize my sphere to the dimensions of the ball I want to use in there. I want to be careful. If I just drag this ball in right now, we're going to lose it because it is smaller than the height of that. This is where I want to raise it up in the air. Uh, I'm going to raise it up eight, which should be just about right for its height. That's floating a bit high. That's all right. To carve out a cylinder, which will allow this ball to drop through and my maze to be incredibly fun, I'll drag out a whole cylinder and then I will click one of these boxes. I want this to be larger than my little ball. So I will click and then I'll type in the numbers that I want it to be. Reposition. And now I want this hole to go all the way through because it is where the marble will fall out. I select what I want to group and I group them and voila, we have our hole. Adding walls to this maze is an easy peasy. Uh, all I have to do is click 
and say how long I want the wall to be. Let's say I want it to be 10 long, not too big. I want it to be five wide and I only want it to be 10 tall. That had one too many zeros. Let's hit that undo button. I want it to only be 10 tall. There we go. This can be dragged out and then placed inside of our marble maze. Uh, our line tool might be useful here, but we can also get a little creative uh, with some control C for copy, control V for paste to allow us to make a few of these and scatter them about to make this marble puzzle a bit more challenging. Again, another control V will paste another one in. As we've been moving and resizing exactly as we want it, you can also rotate in exact degrees. Click on the rotate and then click in the degree. If I want to rotate 34.7859 degrees, I can type that in, hit enter, and it is perfectly rotated. Uh, there's one more uh, movement I want to show you, and that is how to move something exactly. I'm going to move this over out of the way. This is uh, what I have right now. I want to paste a new one. It has been offset a little bit. I want to make a gap that is only five millimeters wide between the one I started with and the one I just pasted. When I start dragging, we will see these numbers appear. All right, I move this over and we can see that we start at zero. If this is 10 wide, which it is, and I move it 10 over, it's the same distance. I'm going to need to add a few more. I'm going to say 14, and that will give me four millimeters of clearance between these two, just enough for a skillful player to dri drive that marble through. To finish up this maze, if I am happy with the placement of my blockers, I can select all of them, I can group, and now that they are grouped, this is ready for printing. Let's just uh, double check that this uh, bead will fit. All right, it's got a glow around it, which is making it a little tougher to see. And it's snapping. We can change our snap grid. This is a useful feature, which is what is the minimum place that this will snap? Instead of moving over in one millimeter increments, now it moves over in quarter millimeter increments. We can see that I now have my clearance because I can put it right between them. All right, let's check the clearance for our hole. This will be easier with a orthographic view. Remember orthographic view, means that everything that is parallel visually appears to be parallel. That hole is larger than that ball, and we can also move back over here, and we can see that this gap is now definitely larger than that ball. Great. I hope you enjoyed this Can You Build It? I hope you learned some good tips for manipulating an object exactly how you want to. Can you build a better marble maze than this? Let me know.